Welcome back <laughs> to, to Loathsome Things, a horror movie podcast. A horror movie podcast. Yes. My name is John, and uh, as always, I am joined by my delightful co-host, Josh. It's me. I'm Josh. That's Josh, folks. Okay, we're doing a quiet episode. ASM do dork. <laughs> ASM Dogecoin to the moon. Whoa. Yeah, it's not even a timely reference by the recording time. <laughs> that literally has no meaning. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Congratulations, the future. You made it here. Congratulations. Oh, Yuletide time. Oh, yeah. Merry Christmas. How's your shopping going? Just kidding. You don't have a microphone. <laughs> That's right. So turn this off and get your ass to Walmart. Get thee to a superstore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. You need a rotisserie chicken and $500 more in gifts. And you're going to need to fight somebody for a television. Yes. <laughs> I accidentally went to Walmart on uh, Thanksgiving night. Uh, on our way back from Thanksgiving, we were like, you know what? A jigsaw puzzle sounds fun. And we oh. went inside and we didn't realize. And it was uh, it was it was a horror movie in there. Oh, God, what a nightmare. That's yeah, that's a pretty bad day to go. Yeah, we just didn't think it was the only place that was open. And uh, we didn't realize that people were corralled like 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 animals and uh behaved as such too it was a nightmare yeah that sounds terrible yeah never again i love that people are able to put aside the hum like humiliating experience of just literally being herded like cattle and reduced to you know our most savage instincts just just so they can get something that's kind of cheaper than it usually is yeah, the the big thing they had the they had the the big TV like over in the milk section, and people were at the like cusp of assaulting one another about it. <laughs> milk fight. <laughs> the cashier looked at us like crazy people because we had a bottle of wine and a cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like this four dollar dollar bottle of wine. And this Star Wars jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. This, this uh, bottle of wine, it has a duck on it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Christmas aside. Christmas aside, John, what are we watching today? Oh, we've got a real gem for you, folks. Mm hmm. Continuing with our romp through uh, three movies with the same title, similar story ish uh, well uh, kind of get it gets further and further afield as you go it's like a sequel <laughs> yeah <laughs> but definitely not <laughs> but not a sequel no. it's that's right it's 2006's <laughs> black christmas that's right. The Glenn Morgan reboot slash remake of Black Christmas, where he's a fan of Black Christmas. And he was like, you know what would make a Black Christmas a better movie if we uh, delved deeper into the story behind Billy, the motor? Uh, yeah, bad call. Not a great call. <laughs> Let's see. Glenn Morgan, uh, you know, he he is obviously a big fan of the original. He he consulted with Bob Clark and even like had Bob Clark on set and Bob Clark gave this his blessing. His whole idea behind this was, yeah, but let's let's see what's going on with Billy. <laughs> One of the best parts of the first movie was not really having any clue what the hell that was all about. Let's dig into that. <laughs> yeah let's uh let's let's make some concrete creative decisions about what he was talking about and 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 move on from there and we'll get a bunch of 90s teen actresses together <laughs> and yes. throw them all together so that teens will want to see this movie except that they won't they won't and it'll be really hard to tell who the main character is for most of the movie <laughs> Oh, and just in case, let's put 
excessive and just absolutely ridiculous gore in it. <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, let's, well, now, to be fair, to be fair to Glenn Morgan, he didn't want that in there. It turned out that uh, the reason all that's in there is because the Weinstein brothers insisted. <laughs> yeah, go figure. The yeah. Weinstein brothers had a bad idea. Yeah, they were like, hey, what if we had way more violence towards women in here? Wouldn't that be great? <sighs> yeah, the scene, there's a scene that uh, we'll, we'll get to that I was like, oh, the Weinstein brothers were behind this movie and mm-hmm. this is happening. Just a little bit. Yeah. And just in case people might have come into this and thought, hey, Glenn Morgan, a new director, uh, do, doing a remake of a, a famous classic of horror, w- why wouldn't I want to see that? Just in case that might happen. First, he directed the Crispin Glover remake of Willard. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes. And he even said after that movie flopped and then whenever he was working on this movie, he said, if this movie doesn't do well, I'll probably just never direct again. And that is indeed what happened. (laughs) So we have to give Glenn Morgan credit for at least having some sense. Yes. Yeah. I I will give Glenn Morgan full credit for being a fan of horror and of sci-fi. Like it's obvious from the things that he works on that he has a strong love of the things that we love. Yeah. So Glenn Morgan, you're a cool guy, probably, I guess, hopefully. Uh, And, and you've, you tried. He tried. And, you know, to be fair, I actually was on board to a point. I mean, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't earth shattering, but it was like, okay, this is watchable. He kind of sort of captured the feel of being in the house from the first movie. It it kind of had a similar look and feel and it was campy. And, and, and way more, you know, silly and, and 90s-ish, even though it was, you know, 2000s. But this could have easily been a 90s movie. But uh, yeah, but but it just it eventually just became too much. It was like he didn't know when to back off. Yeah, he he gave it a really good try. It's just there is lots of stuff where where it just went overboard. There were lots. Of, yeah, there. I don't know. There are lots of times where it's like, oh, oh, really? We're doing this now? <laughs> I knew I was in trouble when I was taking my notes and I was like, it was, it was like after about five minutes of the movie, I felt like I had 900 pages of notes. Yes. I was was like, okay, there's way too much going on here and none of it really matters. At a certain point I had to scroll to the top of my notes and I was like, oh, this is, this is taking too long. This is going to suck. (laughs) So join us for the next two and a half hours as we discuss Glenn Morgan's Black Christmas. And if you haven't seen it yet, you're a lucky person. So we're going to talk about it anyway. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and say this is one that you can watch first, but you don't have to. Yeah, you don't have to watch it at all. We're probably yeah. going to be more entertaining than the movie. <laughs> I don't know if what you're looking for is some sweater puppies, then this movie's very entertaining. <laughs> it does have some sweater puppies. Yeah, it's like, what if a bunch of cute girls bounced around inside of a house for a few hours and got murdered yeah if 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 you showed up for the sweater puppies though you don't you don't get that much of it yeah not not excessive sweater puppyage yeah just slight puppelage it's making me uncomfortable to keep saying it so i'm gonna stop okay (laughs) after this movie was a complete flop uh bob clark started his plans to make a direct sequel to the original and he wanted olivia hussey to reprise her role as jess but would now be the new house mother of whatever kappa get guy yeah kappa dude will do other than directing glenn morgan produced had lots of has continued to produce and write things including the Jet Li versus Jet Li movie, The One, the television series Space Above and Beyond, Final Destination and Final Destination 3, Mm -hmm. the X-Files reboot, and the Jordan Peele Twilight Zone reboot. So he's a nerd. Yeah, he's definitely a nerd. He's a sci-fi and horror nerd, which cool, cool dude, hopefully. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Likes his genre stuff. Yeah, Bob Clark had his plans uh, for the sequel. He died instead, but he was planning on doing a sequel to this and planning on doing a remake of Death Dream. So would have been cool things if uh, drunk driving wasn't a thing. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. That's hor- so horrible. With his son. You know? Yeah. 
Fuck. Uh, you know, it's funny. This movie, I mean, it if it had just kind of tamed itself down a little bit, it, it really could have been okay. It, it, I would have considered it a success. But yeah. it just doesn't. It just it just gets more and more hectic to the point where it's it's tiring. It's actually exhausting. By the final act of movie. See, that's the thing is this movie like has a three act structure, but mm-hmm. then they went ahead and just threw a fourth act in there where yeah. everything just gets kind of slapped around. Yeah. It's not great. No. And if you're going to kill a whole bunch of people and boy, do they kill a lot of people in this movie. <laughs> If you're going to kill a whole bunch of people, maybe not have 90% of them killed in the exact same way. Yeah. I, I didn't get that. Was that like his signature or something? I guess their signature. Uh, yeah. I mean, based yeah. on the childhood trauma. It's a childhood trauma movie, folks. Yeah. Which, I mean, that was part of the thing that made the original so good was that all of the character development behind Billy is like what we hear him say Mm -hmm. and it just as easily could have been things from his own childhood as it was just things that he heard and now has parroted back since we've heard him you know he parroted back the thing about uh like having a wart removed in Mm -hmm. one of those voices so that could be something from his childhood or it could just be things that he overheard right before murdering people we don't know yeah. But this was like, oh yeah, let's uh let's do it. Let's let's show all the incest that Billy happened to. Let's do the basket case style flashback scene where we're you know, for where we're actually several of them where we see a whole bunch of exposition take place. Yes. Let's individually flashback to a variety of years between the seventies, eighties, and nineties. And let's throw in a lot of red herrings in there. I know the original did a red herring. If this movie tried to do a lot of interesting things from the original, there's a lot of homages. There's like at the very beginning of of, uh, of the original, there's, you know, uh, Mrs. Mac complains that the front door is stuck. And in this one, there's a stuck door and it's just like a little thing. There's lots of stuff in there. And that's mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. Lots of cool little Easter eggs. But the movie didn't do it. No, no, it really didn't. It was unfortunate. Yeah, it really is. The 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 cast is really weird. It's a strange cast. Yeah, you've got Michelle Trachtenberg. You might know her as Dawn in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Jenny in Euro Trip, or Harriet in Harriet the Spy. Mm-hmm. I actually saw this movie in theaters because I had a huge crush on on Michelle Trachtenberg. What this one or Harriet the Spy? Uh, this one. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> Nice. Yes. I also rented Euro Trip on DVD, the unrated version, with hope, but it was not there. <laughs> this movie also stars Mary Elizabeth Winstead from before she was a big deal. She is actually yeah. the only one that has gone on to become a bigger deal now than she was that in this movie. That's true, yeah. She's since starred in Death Proof, Scott Vil- Pilgrim vs. the World, Mathis Van higgins the thing whoa yes swiss army man 10 cloverfield lane birds of prey and the fantabulous emancipation of one harley quinn and a movie that i hope that we review at some point called faults oh yeah yeah that's a good one yeah she's great in this uh her part is weird yeah yeah i guess she's supposed to be a southern belle without a southern accent yeah her daddy does nascar yeah it, it was meaningless yeah it was a throwaway line it didn't (laughs) have anything to do with anything oh but she did die in a car she did die in a car that's true (laughs) yeah i guess that's what that was um let's see we've also got Lacey chabert the queen Mm -hmm. of hallmark movies in here god no kidding you might also know her uh, from mean girls not another teen movie and the 1998 remake of lost in space with matt leblanc (laughs) Bingo. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> There's also Katie Cassidy as quote unquote the main character. I yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she is famous for Samuel Bayer's A Nightmare on Elm Street, the Arrowverse mm. TV series on the CW, mm-hmm. and Eminem's music video, Just Lose It. Oh, really? <laughs> nice. Yes. Catch that. 
Uh, we've got Yan K. Crystal Lowe. Uh, she was also in Final Destination 3, Wrong mm-hmm. Turn 2, Dead End, Hot Tub Time Machine, oh, yeah. and a series of made-for-TV movies called Signed, Sealed, Delivered, where she plays Rita Hayworth. Wow. Like like a bunch of movies. Oh, that's crazy. There's also in here, we've got Kristen Cloak as Lee, the older sister of Claire. Mm -hmm. Um, She has been in basically every single thing that Glenn Morgan has ever had a hand in, including Space Above and Beyond, Final Destination, and Willard. Huh, crazy. And finally, we have Andrea Martin as Miss Mac, uh, who this podcast knows best as Phil from the 1974 masterpiece, Bob Clark's Black Christmas. That's right, the... They brought her back. Yeah, they they brought her back to play Miss Mac. Yeah, a strange casting. She did fine, but yeah, yeah. she did fine. They they tried to hit the same story notes, except for the severe alcoholism, and yeah. uh, it was it was good. She did she was fine. Yeah, she did she did okay. Yeah. I mean, for the most part, the performances in the movie are aren't that bad. They're yeah. they're okay. Um, there's some funny moments and some you know. I mean, it's it's. They're not having to really stretch their legs here, but you know, everybody, everybody seems to do okay. Yeah. This was, this was right before the great recession happened. So, you know, they could just make a kind of all right movie and people would throw money at it. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Except no this kidding. one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, this one, this one really just doesn't meet you halfway. I mean, it's like, man. Yeah, it it really doesn't. Like this one this one is like a movie that it feels like he directed to fans of the original mm-hmm. and then didn't care about everyone else, but then also wasn't great at making <laughs> it for the fans. Yeah, I don't yeah, I don't know what the hell. I mean it, yeah. I I just love that the the Weinsteins saw that and their thought was it needs more gore. Yeah, we're we're gonna need uh, some eyeballs in here. <laughs> I mean it's yeah, the gore is there. It's so absurd, though. It's just it's just I mean, it's it feels shoehorned. It doesn't need to be there. Um, yeah. It never needs to be there. But I mean, in this case, it just it just seems like it, it's it's just too much. It doesn't it's not relevant. Maybe it would have been a little bit more entertaining if for one of the repetitive kills, they had used a shoehorn. <laughs> yes, it would work. <laughs> <laughs> At least it would be something unique. Yeah. So go watch the movie uh, unless you get upset about bad remakes or just don't want to. Then skip this one and listen to us. It's watchable ish, but it's mm-hmm. just not anything special at all. Then come back and listen to us or just yeah. keep listening. Right. And you're back. Hey, oh. Whoa. John, uh, what in in eighty three words or less? How would you spoil this entire movie? Right, um, to uh, half baked <laughs> four remake of the original Black Christmas. Uh huh. Huffs my nards. <laughs> I think that comes after the limit. <laughs> Do I get extra credit? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. It kind of is a Nardhuffer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Glenn Morgan's Nardhuff. Bl- wasted promise. Yeah. Yeah, this is not good. And there's eyeballs just, just, just everywhere. Some of them are for eating. Yeah, a lot of eyeball eating. And who knows exactly how he decides what the eyeballs are going to finally be for. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of uh, total head explosion impalements that made no sense. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. It will. It will make you question the uh, structural integrity of Christmas ornaments. <laughs> yeah. And and just how much force does it take to push an eyeball out through the back of someone's skull without damaging the eyeball whatsoever? <laughs> God. <laughs> there's so many of those too i mean it just happens over and over it's like oh okay and now this again another impalement oh i wonder what this one's gonna be oh an accidental impalement yeah that was the worst that was absolutely the worst it's like 
really? That's all you got? I guess it was supposed to be funny. I think so. Like, oops, well, it, it turns out it's just luckier to be the bad guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The movie opens like the original uh, from outside of a sorority house that's decorated for Christmas. Uh, inside, we see girls dancing. One's blowing cigarette smoke out of a window. And the outdoors is blustery, winter, and unpleasant looking. Mm -hmm. We see a girl open a bottle of wine and start drinking to get through the agony of wrapping Christmas gifts. Uh, she's writing a card to lee with a fountain pen there's a shuffling in her closet and noise in the vents we see someone hiding under her bed and when she comes back from investigating the shuffling noises to finish writing the card her pen is gone uh, her face is then covered with a bag and she is stabbed in the eye socket with the pen yep one up one down yep her name is Claire, we will find out. That is the same first girl death name from the original. That's where the names stop being the same. Yes, and for whatever reason, they thought it would be really cool to give each of the female characters a last name of a some singer. Yeah, singers that did Christmas songs. So stupid. Oh, so is that what it was, Christmas songs? Yep, so it, like Kelly Presley is Elvis, like all of them. All of them either have the name from the original or have names that are similar to musicians that played famous Christmas songs because Black Christmas is a play on the song White Christmas. Oh, yeah. So and so Mathis and all that. Yeah. yeah that's why the fucking people keep saying, I'll be home for Christmas. <sighs> And it's a good thing to, to know their names because there's like 5,000 names going around all the time. And it's impossible to keep up with who is who and who's related to who. And, and it just it doesn't even fucking matter. Yeah, that's the thing is I couldn't even tell like who matters in this movie. Yeah. The original was real good. There were like a certain number of characters. There were even a lot of characters in that movie, but you could you, they were all very discernible. With this one, it's really hard to tell who anyone's talking about or why it matters. Yeah, but apparently sisterhood. Yeah, yeah, I that that should, that didn't feel stamped on at all. Mm -mm. The genuine feminism of the original is replaced with I don't know. I guess we'll say because sisterhood. <laughs> yeah, stupid. Pop off another button. The movie then moves to Clark Sanitarium. Clark, uh, Bob Clark, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where Santa makes it into the danger ward because the security people suck at their job and a door is left open when a carton of milk falls and is wedged in the doorway. This has nothing to do with the rest of the movie. <laughs> it really doesn't. Uh, the security guard says this ain't no place for Santa Claus. And Santa sees that one of the cells contains Billy Lynn's. They have a whole thing about the mythology of Billy Lynn's. And his, there's a padlock because his mom kept him locked up in the attic. And, and they have a whole back and forth. And it turns out that the key to Billy Lynn's is that he wants to feel at home, especially at Christmas. He's tried to escape every year just to be home on Christmas <laughs> and they feed him a plate of cooked chicken yeah. the creepy orderly guy says tastes just like chicken because it's chicken <laughs> I was like wow okay yeah. that was funny I guess he says it's the closest they could get to how his mom used to taste <laughs> yeah which we will find out over the course of this movie. He ate human flesh exactly one time, but apparently every Christmas they try to make him a dinner that tastes like human flesh. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. Are they trying to be nice? Are they fucking with him as if that would work? It just, it makes no sense. I guess they're trying to be nice because he thinks it's great. He gobbles it down real gross. That's true. He really does wipe it all over his mouth and get greasy. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he makes sure as much of it gets between his fingers as possible <laughs> on his way to the old teeth. His yellowed fingers. Oh my god, I don't... Mm, that is just so annoying. <laughs> yeah. There's also a candy cane on his plate. That will not come into play later on. Nope. No, nope. Not gonna. Not gonna figure into this in any way. Back at the sorority house, a girl is in a car with a boy and they have kisses. Uh, then they have a dumb conversation that doesn't matter. 
we find out that she considers her sorority sisters to be real family. And he says, I'm your family now. And that doesn't mean anything later. <laughs> and, and she's not impressed when he says it, even at the moment. <laughs> Very unimpressive boyfriend. Uh, after she goes inside, he then looks up longingly at a window. Yeah, that was <laughs> like, oh, OK, or does this whatever? <laughs> It, it, it makes me miss Peter from the last movie, because as much of a shit as Peter was in the last movie, at least he was an interestingly unpleasant character. He was. He he was definitely uniquely disgusting. Yeah, whereas Kyle is just bland nothingness. Just another teen douche. Inside Miss Mac, not Mrs. Mac, Miss Mac in this mm -hmm. movie. Uh, is looking for Billy's present under the tree while a bunch of girls sit around looking hot and not caring. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Acting, act, act, you know, just can't be bothered. Yeah, they're, they're busy doing phone stuff or fingernail stuff or drinking stuff. They talk about all of the women that aren't present. Uh, there's a I'd like to bury the hatchet with my sister right in her head joke for some reason. Mm-hmm. So we find out that all of these women have poor relationships with their sisters. There's yeah. like a lot of that going on in here. Like they all have actual sisters that they don't get along with. Yeah. And it really matters later. It really does. <laughs> it comes into play. Oh, does it ever? Oh, back at the sanitarium, Billy left a wrapped gift for the guard. We see Billy, uh, he slides the little door to check in on Billy. Billy is in his rocking chair, uh, rocking chair. Bob Clark loves the rocking chairs. What an homage. Um, he's eating a candy cane in his rocking chair, and we see that the candy cane is now sharpened to a crazy long point. <laughs> because that's what you do. You just give yeah. give them give them things to kill you with. Right. The the guard opens the gift on the inside he has written, I'll be home for Christmas. Great. In pencil, <laughs> I guess, which you could also use to stab someone. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, but candy cane. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the guard opens the door, but Billy doesn't seem to be there. But there is a big hole dug into the wall where the toilet used to be, and the guard investigates. But instead, it turns out Billy was hiding under the bed and kills the guard with the candy cane while looking like the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he is yellow but also sometimes just kind of green and also sometimes just kind of normal skinned depending on the lighting in the room yeah he's really not scary looking at all no he looks like the stunt double for lou ferrigno but not a very convincing one <laughs> lou ferrig extra no <laughs> <laughs> lou ferrig i don't think so <laughs> lou ferrig nope <laughs> Uh, back at the sorority house, it's time to open presents. Yay! <laughs> we find out from one girl whose name is Lauren that Christmas is just Darwin. The weak get eaten, and some business happens with that. That's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh man, she's so jaded. <laughs> yeah. In the room, one girl is upset while she watches bad porn. There is a plastic-wrapped girl in the attic rocking chair by the window, which is, you know, a mirror from the original. So we mm -hmm. see that the, the dead girl has been placed in the rocking chair by the window. But also there's a light-up Santa there. Mm-hmm. For some reason, just kind of in the shot. Yes, the house has an overabundance of, of uh, Christmas decorations, even including in places where no one would ever put a Christmas decoration. Yeah, it's it. This plate, this is like the Christmas, Christmas, Christmas sorority. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah, it's uh, it's intensely Christmas. Back back to the girl watching the bad porn. Upsettedly, in the porn, the guy just can't stop staring at the camera, <laughs> like Dennis in Always Sunny. It's, it's real weird. <laughs> it is. It's extremely <laughs> awkward. It's also some of that um, on the bed, under the blankets, mostly sex that, you know, porn is famous for. Yeah. <laughs> kind that no one watches. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. They got under the covers. I'm glad their extremities won't be cold. <laughs> I mean, it is Christmas time. 
That's true. While she's watching this, she hears attic noises. Uh, she climbs up the industrial strength attic ladder that they have installed into the wall of this home. She sees a ballerina snow globe. Part of what she was hearing was like music box music mm-hmm. that comes from the snow globe. Uh, She sees Claire dead by the window and then gets bagged and stabbed by the same person that bagged and stabbed Claire. Mm -hmm. Lots of head stabbing already, and we're just getting started. She gets the bag over the head, stabbed in the eye, but then keeps screaming and struggling for a long time. Yeah. It's not instant, the death, but... Even though she heard the snow globe music box music from downstairs and all the way across the house, all of this thrashing and screaming that she's doing is not heard by anyone else. (laughs) Yes, exactly. It's great. Oh, yeah. And then we get a really, like, high tensile strength eyeball yoinked out of the eye socket business. Yeah. Yeah. Great stuff. We... Don't really know who the main character is at this point in the movie. There's just a bunch of girls. For a second, it seemed like maybe it was going to be her since she's watching weird porn. Mm -hmm. But no, not her. Back at the sanitarium, Santa is still just walking around like an asshole, flirting with a nurse, and then gets very killed by Billy in a splash of blood. Yes, yeah, no kidding. After after uh, a. maybe two minutes of excruciating sexual innuendo with the nurse that I thought would never end. Yeah. And then finally, Billy just puts an end to that, thank God. Yeah, it's the the sexual bravado talk, the, oh, I don't like to keep a woman waiting type of stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's... <laughs> Super not good. It's terrible. We then see that Billy is wearing the Santa suit, walks out with a bag, uh, but the bag is full of the dead Santa guy. He throws away the body, and then he also throws away the Santa suit. And I see, I like that moment because it's like Santa with his bag of gifts going out the door, but but in the bag is actually the guy that was originally dressed as Santa. That's kind of a pretty funny sight gag. It is. It's, you know, basic. And, and that's that kind of stuff... You could make a good movie with stuff like that, but it just he just gets away from it. Most of the good things in this movie don't stick around. <laughs> no, it's usually a one-shot thing. It almost feels like an accident. Oh yeah, somewhere in here, I don't know if we're coming up on it or if it already happened, but in one shot you can see a a lamp in the background and mm. it's it's the uh it's like a showgirl leg lamp like from the Christmas story movie. Mm -hmm, that Bob Clark made. Just in there as a little homage. Just one more thing. I knew it was there because I'd read about it, but I didn't see it. Did you see it? I saw it. Yeah, it's there. There's a line uh, back when they're doing the, the Secret Santa thing. They're just so stupid that they that it's like traditional to have a gift for the serial killer that used to live in the house. Mm-hmm. But, but there's a line in there that um, I think it's Michelle Trachtenberg says, it's <laughs> it's raining hail the size of Yao's ball sack. Ah, uh, yeah. What was that? I don't know. Is it a Yao Ming reference? I think it was. Okay. Which, wow. Yeah, there, there's lots of that. I think that it was either Michelle Trachtenberg or Lacey Chabert. I don't remember which, but like there, there's lots of just like weird throwaway lines in here that don't mean anything. Yeah, it was strange. Yeah. So yeah, now we're back at the house and then we get this, this, this Lauren girl who's getting hammered, I guess she's supposed to be the, the Margot Kidder character, sort of, yep. in a way. But anyways, she starts, they start talking all this horse shit about, uh, you know, like paganism and, and mm-hmm. you know, just all this nonsense. Yeah, all the pagan sacrifice. She's, I love how she's supposed to be edgy, but she's just stupid. Yeah, college edgy, but yeah, just, just kind of an asshole and drunk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Part of it is uh, that Santa's a fat warrior who judges you before breaking into your house. And then she says, just like Billy. And then Miss Max is like, Billy didn't break in. Billy lived here. Dun, dun, dun. Pops a fiery marshmallow into her mouth. And it's supposed to, you know, look like mm. an eyeball. Yeah, like an eyeball because right. eyeballs. <sighs> so time for our first flashback to 1970. Baby's first Christmas. Yeah. Here we go. (laughs) We find out that Billy was born with a rare disease that makes his skin yellow. That disease is called jaundice. Yeah, it's a rare disease that causes your skin to turn yellow. Yeah. You know, jaundice. jaundice. (laughs) The one one that that is very well known and isn't that rare. 
isn't it also like a condition of other things isn't it more like a symptom and not just something that people live with their whole lives as the pure disease unto itself yeah it has something to do with your liver and the way it filters out certain things or doesn't in this case so it becomes present in the in the skin makes the skin look yellow I could be wrong. I don't know anything, but I thought it was, you know, oh, you've got kidney failure. And one of the side effects is jaundice, not he's born with jaundice. Yeah. And now he looks like yellow Play-Doh. Yeah. That glows. It is like straight up like glow light yellow too. Whenever he's a little baby, like (laughs) I also wouldn't want that baby. Yeah. 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 To be fair to his horrible mother. (laughs) And we find out that Billy's mom hates him, not because of the jaundice, but because he looks like her husband. (laughs) Who she also hates. She hates her husband. She hates her baby. She's a wonderful human being. Then it does a flash forward to 1975, where now Billy is five and his mother is yelling at him for bothering to leave Santa cookies because Santa is not coming to see him. The Russians shot his sleigh down and Santa Claus is dead. (laughs) Yeah. And the house is like the most, well, it's of course, it's the, the same house from later, but it's it's the most stereotypical house. And and also, I just would like to point out that uh, what year was Black Christmas? I believe 74, the original. 74. So what is going on that he's in the house in 70, 75 with his mom? And it's, it's because this is not a sequel or a prequel. This is just a remake. This is a reimagining. I guess so. Yeah, I guess it's a reimagining. Yeah, you think you'd think that like maybe they could just, you know, do something else. But no, they're like, no, it still it still needs to land at the end where people have caller ID. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So that's what they went for. They're like, no, this is just not not directly related to the original. It's my own thing. His dad hid a gift for Billy in a hole in the wall, and Mm -hmm. it is an Apollo Soyuz model. Yeah, and kind of gives us a hint that Billy is like the people behind the stairs. Is that I don't know what that means. Oh, it's a it's a movie. It's a, a Wes Craven movie, but there's like the the conceit is that there's these these well, let's just say creatures for people who haven't seen the movie, but Ooh. that live inside the walls of the house like under the stairs or whatever. So Billy is like he's he's obviously got the lay of the house, you know, memorized. And this is like his you know, he feels comfortable hiding in the walls of the house because that's where he can kind of get away from his mom. Yeah, we uh, we see that it, it comes into play where uh, while he's opening his gift, his parents get into a fight and then apparently her boyfriend shows up and Billy like traverses the walls in business after he sees his dad get a bag put over his head and then his skull caved in with a hammer. Yeah. And so he's he's running around in between the walls and they go to bury his dad's body in the crawl space underneath the house. And they see him peeking out through a hole in something. And so he has to traverse through the walls again, goes up into the attic and gets locked in the attic. And everything, you know, one thing I have to say, like you kind of have to give Glenn Morgan credit because everything seems to be thought out. Every little weird twist and everything is so convoluted but it's all interrelated and it actually seems like he planned every little thing but it's just too much it it is kind of a lot i guess where does the jaundice come from was he yellow in the original is there like a shot where his hand looks yellow no i don't think so i think that's something they just did for this one for, for i don't know why just to make him creepier looking i guess yeah and and even the 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 stuff with agnes i don't know if that was I yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then there was then there was all this other like who's who's that girl? What was her name? Eve, the one with the nerd glasses. Yes, Eve. What the fuck was that? Why was she? She just came out of nowhere. Had mm-hmm. no relevance. It was there was so much of that was really confusing to me. Well, she was the red herring because we're supposed to think that she's Agnes. Okay, that's and I did think she was Agnes, but it was so ham fisted that I I thought I was just being stupid. 
like, oh no, I'm I'm dumb. I just I just misread that because at that point I was starting to get lost with stuff. Even that is kind of a like a little homage to the original because in the original you're supposed to think that it might be Peter, but no one watching the movie thought it was Peter. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but you know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> jokes on the guy. Everyone in the movie, we all know it's not Peter. Yeah, we know it's not that guy. He's too sad about a piano. <laughs> Yeah, no shit. Back in 2006, the phone rings. They listen on speakerphone while the whole, where's Agnes? She's my little girl now. Get out of my house. I'm going to kill you. Speech happens. Less piggy cunt this time. They they yeah. admitted that, which is weird. You'd think the Weinsteins would be like, oh, yeah, throw, throw a bunch of that around. Oh, man, this is going to be it. Get all the piggy cunts in there. <laughs> Jesus. Somewhere Oprah is not having happiness. <sighs> they see that the call came from Claire's phone. Ooh, you don't have to have a whole Lineman Graham sequence. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that would have been amazing. Yeah. How, how will we replace Lineman Graham in our movie? I guess more random characters. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> yeah, that's people always love that. Let's see. There's some pointless interpersonal conflict between some of the girls that has nothing to do with anything and is not fun to watch. It isn't fun to watch, doesn't create any tension. It's just plain annoying. Eve Agnew shows up to give, out of nowhere, to give Mary Elizabeth Winstead a crystal unicorn. Um, yeah. She says, quote, I know you like the Bible and stuff, which I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, the Bible and stuff. Yeah. Eve is a uh, tall, blonde, hair pulled back, big glasses, beanpole type person. That's how mm -hmm. we're supposed to see her. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a, a odd duck that people don't really seem to get along with, but some people try. And the fact that her last name is Agnew is supposed to sound like Agnes. Right. Good. Yeah, real clever. As Eve goes to leave, Miss Mac says, wait, wait, I've got your present under the stairs. But whenever she turns around, Eve is already gone and they can't figure out where she went. It's so funny because you're as, hearing you talk, say that it, it's so obvious that she, she was super intentionally supposed to, you know, be like the used as a red herring. But it's so it was so badly done for me that I didn't I, yeah. I actually decided that she wasn't supposed to be used in that way. Yeah. <laughs> That's that is some real failing. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, there's also other parts like there. There's going to be a part later where Mary Elizabeth Winstead is searching through her room, but we'd been told that she was like going to someone else's room. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. And then she digs around and then she comes back and she was like, look what I found in Eve's room. <laughs> and they're like, wait a minute. <laughs> Flashback to 1982. Billy's mom is having sex on the staircase with a, a sleep guy. Uh, she says something to the effect of every fucking time. We see Billy is up in the attic, is rocking in his rocking chair because Bob Clark loves rocking chairs. Mm -hmm. She goes up to... Get Billy to finish the job in a pretty uncomfortable scene. <laughs> yeah, that was really, really disturbing. Nine months later, Agnes is born. Downstairs, the Billy's mom is cradling Agnes. She hears a squeak on the ceiling, looks up to where she knows Billy is, and we see that Billy can hear her say, she's my family now. Yeah. Great. It then goes back to Eve Agnew, the weird girl, who we, the audience, now quote-unquote know is Agnes. Mm -hmm. That's the scene where she disappears when Miss, Miss Mac is looking for the gift. Uh, we find out that, well, as they start talking about her, we find out that Eve's mother was a legacy but is dead, and Eve has no family. Yeah. This is when they're talking about who got Lauren a gift and Michelle Trachtenberg says that she, all she needs is a shot of tequila and then she passes Lauren a shot of tequila that she drinks and then chases down with red wine. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And later we'll get vomity. I wonder why. <laughs> Bonus vomity later. Yeah. They have a kind of fun conversation about stuff that doesn't matter. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's enjoyable banter. Then from outside, we see a giallo camera walking up to the front porch. <laughs> we find out that there's a winter storm that will affect phone calls in a very specific way. Your, your cell phones will be able to make local calls, but might not be able to make calls across the country because of the very specific kind of storm it is. 
it's it's a very special and oddly disruptive storm. Yeah, it's a very convenient story storm. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> We see that they got Miss Mac an ugly nighty, <laughs> and she asks, "Does it come with a man to wear it?" Uh, four. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that makes me wonder: in the original, you know that like giant flannel nightgown that they got Mrs. Mac, mm-hmm. was that supposed to be sexy? <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, it looked like a like a you know like a tent or something. Yeah, maybe that was nineteen sexy four. I mean, she didn't, because she didn't, she certainly didn't think it was sexy. She thought it was frumpy. Well, yeah, but she said that she had about, oh, okay, yeah. She said she had just about as much use for that as a chastity belt. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know. It's weird. It's a little odd. Maybe both movies are weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're definitely weird, but the first yeah. one is good. Yes. <laughs> Uh, At this point, the phone rings and everyone experiences on-screen tension. Uh, They (laughs) they see that the phone call is from Megan's phone. Uh, They answer it and there's a, a, you know, there's a moaner voice saying, she's my family now, I'll be home for Christmas, and then quotes, I'm going to bury the hatchet in your head, which is not an exact quote from earlier in the movie, but close enough. Yeah, and... uh, I think this is the point where the movie really starts to just veer off track and just, well, just kind of just wander in like, and then from here on out, it just gets more and more convoluted and hectic. And that's the scene where you just kind of realize, you know, they're, they'd never really utilize the phone gag enough. Like the idea of, of the phone from inside the house or whatever. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the things that black Christmas is known for. And you know, it's, it's, it's an easy thing to do. I mean, you just put it in there, you know, but instead they have to make it some stupid cell phone thing. It was strange because there are points in the movie where it is supposed to be a focus of tension, Mm -hmm. but it's so ridiculous that it's not. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's not a lot of tension in the movie at all. The suspense is, is pretty just, it's too much. It's too spastic, I think. Yeah, and some of it is so unbelievable that it's just like, well, that obviously isn't anything. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So because the phone came from Megan, uh, or the call came from Megan's phone, they go to check Megan's room. Michelle Trachtenberg has to help Lauren because she's drunk. Then they find out that it's just Kyle who is someone's boyfriend. Oh, right. It's, it's It's Kelly's boyfriend from earlier. (laughs) <laughs> who is apparently the main character, I guess. But also banged Megan. Yeah, in bad porn and stared directly into the camera the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Under the covers. He apparently has climbed in through Megan's window to see Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, he doesn't know if Megan is in the room that he just was in because it's dark in there. Yeah, that was so dumb. Yeah, it's it's real bad. And uh, there keeps it keeps showing us a shot of them outside of Megan's room through the doorway from the perspective of just behind the computer, so we can see the porn that's on pause. Yes, the still frame from the terrible porn. Yes, and then eventually it turns into a screensaver of a disembodied eyeball with wings. Great. <laughs> Uh, he calls them spoiled bitches and says, I used to play on this street before it was turned into sorority houses. Yeah, he's a real jerk. He, he sucks a lot. He talks about how everyone used to be scared of this house. They ask him what happened. And he says, quote, you mean after Billy washed down his Christmas cookies with a glass of milk? God. Flashback to 1991. Great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. We see that for Christmas, Billy got a telescope from his mom and stepdad that hate him. Yeah, with a bow on it. So they came up into the attic with a gift for him. I don't know where he was while that was going on. And he didn't see this happen? I didn't see it happen. And they give him Christmas gifts? Like, she did like, mm. I, yeah. This is from the, the lady that said, Santa's, you're wasting your time. Santa's never coming for you. It didn't make any sense. Mm-mm, it really didn't. But it did continue the theme of Billy likes space stuff. Yeah. But uh-huh. then he uses the telescope to look in 
the only neighbor's house. Yeah. Uh, and where nothing really interesting is happening. No, a happy family is opening gifts. There's a little girl opening gifts, and that inspires Billy. It switches to downstairs, and we see his mother feverishly watching Agnes open gifts. She calls <laughs> yeah. Agnes my little cookie, and I could gobble you up. Um, we see Billy hiding behind the Christmas tree. Phone rings. The mom answers the phone. We hear Billy say she's my family now. She sees that Agnes is gone. We as she sees that the doll that she, Agnes got for Christmas has its eyeballs plucked out. They they start yelling and running to the attic. We can just barely hear the dad yell out, "What your mother and I must know is." <laughs> <laughs> And uh, they go up into the attic, but no one's there. And downstairs, we see Billy cover Agnes's head with a bag and pop out one of Agnes's eyes and eat it. Then as the dad comes at him, he stabs the dad in the eye with a Christmas ornament, and it pops out through the back of his head. The skull is ruptured, but the eyeball is just fine. Yeah, it's like his head explodes, essentially. Yeah. It's just it's ridiculous. Yep. And how how is he... How was he able to be everywhere in the house at the same time? Yeah, I don't know. I, they didn't really explain that. I guess because he can climb through the walls. Yeah, I guess so. Which, which apparently are like time portals to other parts of the building. <sighs> That's a great premise for a movie. <laughs> <laughs> time walls. Time walls. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, by Gus Hallwerda. Whoa. Oh, uh, let's see. Um, he, he then strangles his mother with Christmas lights. Uh, and then after strangling her with Christmas lights, beats the entire shit out of her with a rolling pin. Beats the living daylights out of her with a rolling pin. Yeah, at, at which they don't show because, you know, it was just too gory. Too much. But it's a rolling pin, you see, because she's going to be cookies. Mm -hmm. He uses an angel cookie cutter to get chunks of her skin and then bakes them like cookies. Mm -hmm. And when the cops show up, Billy is eating mommy skin Christmas cookies. The cops that, that show up for, for what reason? I guess they're the neighbor that lives one telescope of distance away overheard trouble. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sure. But, yeah. Eh. yeah. Just roll with it. Yeah. Just, just rolling pin with it. We've hit the rolling pin with it zone of this movie. <laughs> it, they did a pretty good job on him eating the chicken like Christmas cookies with milk because you could like see the milk squeezing out between the meat as he's chewing on it. And it's a close it really, up on his mouth. That was disgusting. I mean, apparently that was bacon, by the way. Oh, bacon. OK, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Why not? That's closer to human flesh. Sure. We find out that Agnes was saved by at the hospital but she lost her eye she is now orphaned inbred and her father billy was also her brother billy and that no one has seen her since no one wanted her and she went to an orphanage <laughs> so melodramatic <laughs> no one's ever gonna adopt that little piece of shit i know it's <laughs> <So> terrible <sighs> and now it's back to 2006 they like speculate about like why he killed his family and the guy's like oh well because you know for billy that's how you show love <laughs> yeah it's like that was it, a dumb line it was uh now all of a sudden out of nowhere a strange woman is in the living room it's claire's sister lee mm -hmm. she's a legacy but is she because mrs mack was like no i was the house mother then you weren't here and that has nothing to do with anything <laughs> yep it really doesn't. But we do find out that Lacey Chabert loves her coat. <laughs> yes, yes, she does. The quote-unquote main character, Kelly, is in the room with the bad porn and Kyle. And while they're having a little argument, we see that one of the thumbtacks holding up a poster slowly is pushed out through the drywall. <laughs> and then an eyeball can see them through a pushpin-sized hole in the wall somehow. Which somehow was a quarter of an inch wide. Yeah. Yeah. 
at not just that little nothing wide and pointed through. A, I don't know. I don't know. That bothered me a lot. <laughs> Let's see. We find out that Lee, Lee and Claire weren't close as sisters and that Lee doesn't really know much about her. And that's why they were doing this was to finally get to know each other. They're 12 years apart and doesn't matter at, at all. Not even a lick. Like no. I, I didn't care at all. If you'll remember from the very beginning of the movie, right before she was the first person to uh, get killed, uh, she was writing a letter to Lee on a Christmas gift. Uh, okay. So, yeah. I mean, it, it comes around a little bit, but it does not matter. It really doesn't matter. There's no emotional weight to this movie at all. But then to like prove it, she says, oh, I see Billy still gets a Christmas gift under the tree. Oh, this is new. It's from Billy, not to Billy. <laughs> to which Mrs. Mac says, let's open it. Uh, they open it and it is a, it's the Apollo Soyuz box from earlier. And inside mm -hmm. the Apollo Soyuz box is uh, Agnes's doll with no eyeballs. Getting serious now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. I don't even I, think Kyle said, oh, and what he got for Christmas was the Apollo Soyuz model. That was just something for us. So for these people, it's like, oh, someone gave us a creepy doll in an old box. Yeah, great. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. I think at some point they realized that the newspaper is old. Oh, that's right. From 1991. Back in Megan's room, Kyle doesn't want Kelly to look at the computer because he says that's just an invasion of privacy, but we know that's where the bad porn is. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Lauren starts throwing up. Profusely. Just having a, a good old vomity time. They go to check Claire's room. Lee finds the gift that Claire wrapped for her. That's when the power goes out and it makes the screensaver on the computer go away. Kelly sees the bad porn and this is when we're like, I guess maybe she's the main character. It's nothing. Mm -hmm. We find out that the porn is of him and Megan and a guy at work got mad at him and quote, stole his tapes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And put them online. I guess this was at a time where one would still put one's tapes online. <laughs> or tape things at all. Yeah. So so that's what's going on. Uh, she can't believe he would do such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. Because yeah. he's clearly an ass. Kelly yells at Kyle. Uh, she wants to know if she's going to show up on there, I guess. He's taped them as well. And he asks, or she asks him, isn't sex enough, Kyle? <laughs> <laughs> so she is actually just like mad at him for wanting to tape things and not as... Doesn't care about the cheating. Not even cheating. It was from before. But, oh, that's right. But she's just like, you tape sex? <laughs> <laughs> this is 2006, sir. <laughs> No one's used to that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, at this point, he tells her to shut the fuck up. And then everyone is mad at him and he has to leave. Yeah, he's a charmer. Uh, Lauren goes to do more vomiting. Kyle says that he's right, uh, that she's right to be mad at him. But he wasn't, quote, dealing or knocking over 7-Elevens. Yeah. So translation, great guy. Yeah, and that was that's also out of nowhere. Never came back. Like he was like, I was just making pornography. I wasn't <laughs> dealing or knocking over Seven Elevens. What the fuck are you talking about, Kyle? <laughs> <laughs> oh well, in that case, <laughs> were you murdering indigenies across seas? What? <laughs> Okay, uh, he says, fuck all you bitches. And that's whenever Miss Mac ushers him out of the house. Good job, yeah. Miss Mac. Yes, thank you, because he was terrible. Yep. Uh, in the bathroom where Lauren is vomiting, her vomity foot starts knocking all of the bathroom tiles loose. Yeah, suddenly they all come loose. <laughs> it's just shedding its floor tiles. <laughs> Lee makes mention that it's weird that the only neighbors that exist in the entire world have electricity and they don't. Lauren tells Michelle Trachtenberg that she's a better sister her, to her than her own sister is, to which 
Michelle Trachtenberg replies, yeah, Dick Cheney is a better sister to you than your own sister. <laughs> wow, that was, that's a zinger right there. Yeah, timely humor. It must have been such a funny joke in 2006. <laughs> oh, to be 2006 when that was a joke. <laughs> that and a joke about Yao Ming's ball sack. <laughs> yeah. Just Yao. <laughs> just Yao, yeah, not even yeah. Yao, just Yao. Yeah. Well, we're, on a, we're on a first name basis, unless that's his last name. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it is his last name. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Michelle Trachtenberg <laughs> tells Lauren that she smells like shit and needs to take a shower. We find out that Lacey Chabert knows that the main breaker is under the house. And what the fuck? Who puts the main breaker <laughs> under the house? You'll just need to crawl into this hideous crawl space to go <laughs> yeah. check the breaker box. That is poorly designed. Terrible engineering. Yeah. And who has a secondary breaker? I thought you just had one. I don't know. Maybe it's a North thing. Yeah, probably not, though. Yeah, probably not. Whenever she says this, Lee looks at her away and she says what i'm not the helpless daddy's girl everyone says i am and that's weird because no one ever said that in this movie they never did nope okay um so she's gonna go turn the power back on while lee looks for claire some more like i don't know where else you're gonna look for claire in this <laughs> these interactions are very weird and disjointed and it starts like hopping all over the place and getting nuts michelle trachtenberg starts a shower for lauren including sexy candles yeah what the hell is that yeah i guess i guess in a girl's sorority house the bathroom it just always has at least four sexy candles going <laughs> yeah it could be we see that more bathroom tiles are coming loose <laughs> as she <laughs> as as lauren walks on them uh we see a peephole under one of them with an eyeball watching she gets naked drops her clothes on the peephole and so somewhere else another tile pops open and there's another peephole under there <laughs> and so she gets to get watched while she nakedly takes the shortest shower ever yeah uh, whenever she is done with her shower, we see someone hurryingly shimmy through the walls before Michelle Trachtenberg puts her to sleep in her bed and everything's fine. Yes. And in no way was that just an excuse to show boobs. Yeah. To, to show the mostly just the side of one boob and lots of butt. Yeah. Yeah. That was not gratuitous at all. No. Nope. <laughs> oh, she her bra is over the peephole. I guess we can't show the boobs. There's another peephole. These <laughs> girls who can't vomit without knocking off all the tiles never noticed all these peepholes in their <laughs> sorority house. Vomited so hard she stripped the tiles off the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I guess is this an homage to Porky's where they peep through the shower wall? Oh, wow. Maybe it is. Jeez. Maybe. Lacey Chabert goes outside to smoke a cigarette instead of turning the power back on. Yeah. But a melty icicle drips onto the cherry of her cigarette and it goes out. So she drops her cigarette into the ultra convenient cigarette hole in the porch. Two perfectly staged moments. Like the, the droplet just perfectly hits the cherry on her cigarette. And then with one shot, she perfectly drops her cigarette down this tiny hole in the floorboard. Yeah, yeah. Didn't didn't miss and then cuss and then have to like scoot it in with her foot as would normally happen. <laughs> yeah. Now I will say with the droplet hitting the cherry and and basically ruining the whole cigarette, I've been there. That oh, yeah. that definitely happened. <laughs> That's true. I've been there too with rain. <laughs> yeah, it's a real piece of shit moment. But while after she drops the cigarette down there, she hears rustling under the porch and goes to investigate. Meanwhile, Mary Elizabeth Winstead shows the newspaper clippings and doll eyeballs she found in Eve's room, thus further confirming that Eve is Agnes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lee is looking around like a dumb detective for her sister and gets scared by a red-faced Santa decoration and says, fuck you, Santa Claus. <laughs> Great. That's right. A, 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 yeah, a red-faced Santa decoration in a dead-end closet. Yeah, yeah, just just in a, a non-space closet. So it's weird. like six inches deep and has 
no storage space whatsoever in it. Just keeps their racist Santa. <laughs> That's right. Back outside, Lacey Chabert climbs into the crawl space, says, Eve, you crazy bitch, I can see your breath, which is weird because I don't think anyone had claimed that they knew that Eve was still in the house. Nope. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, She gets caught and dragged under the house further by Agnes. They fight. She stabs Agnes with the gardening claw. Agnes then kills her with that gardening claw by shoving it into the back of her head. We see Billy's dad's broken skull has been uncovered by their scuffle, and that has nothing to do with the rest of the movie. (laughs) Nope. (laughs) They get a call from Lacey's phone, or I mean Dana's phone, because that's Lacey Chabert's character's name, Dana. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Uh, we they hear someone say she's my family now and that's whenever they see that Eve's car is still there mm-hmm. uh, they go out to investigate and it looks like Eve is in her car they're like maybe she's taking a nap they open the door and Eve's head rolls out of the car Eve's rubbery head yeah that doesn't look anything like Eve rolls out of the car no it doesn't <laughs> That was, that was part of I, had, I I caught it more fully on the second time around. I was like, wait, who is this? <laughs> and how do they know it's Eve? Because it doesn't look like her at all. Yeah, this is a movie that you have to pay careful attention to to understand what's going on and then realize that it doesn't make sense. Otherwise, this movie is just purely confusing and makes no sense whatsoever. There's no reason for it to be this convoluted. And there's also no reason for her to have been beheaded. They don't do it with anyone else. Yeah, that too. It's weird. It could have just been a perfectly, you know, uh, serviceable slasher and it would have been fine. Would have been watchable, you know, it it wouldn't have... You know, it was never going to be a classic or anything like that, but it could have at least been okay. But it just it just falls apart. What Whatever promise it has just completely crumbles as the movie goes on. Yeah, it's uh, it's not good. And it turns out that there is a reason that she was beheaded instead of just impaled. And that reason is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> so Eve's head falls out of the car. Kelly says, quote, he's out here and we don't know who she's talking about. Yeah, I know. This is the first time that they've realized that anyone has been murdered, and they don't know that Billy escaped. No. So who the hell are they talking about? Yeah, I figured maybe they're talking about Kyle. I guess, but they don't make it clear. Yeah, and they don't ever at any point make it seem like they're afraid of Kyle. Nope. Yeah. Uh, So they call 911. Uh, during the 911 call, Miss Max says, he's home. And at this point, you know that she's talking about Billy. We find out that they, they say that three girls are, quote, missing. Lay insists that they're missing and not dead. Uh, we find out that the cops can be here in two hours because traffic stuff is more important. <laughs> so that's the only cops in this movie, except for the ones that busted into Billy's home. Kelly says they should all stay together. Quote, we'll grab the fireplace poker and a ski pole or something and not yeah. let each other out of our sights until the police get here, which that's fun. They talk about she yeah, makes the yeah. fireplace poker. Oh, good. Yeah. A ski pole, which is for later, I guess. Mm-hmm. Sort of. Yeah. whoop de fucking do. Lee agrees, doesn't want to leave anyone behind. Michelle track uh, they're they're trying to get people like no we need to get in the car and we need to go to the police station. Michelle Trachtenberg yells from off screen, "I'm not leaving Lauren, you bitch." <laughs> That's right. Great. <laughs> uh, Kelly says, "Quote, we're sisters, so act like it." And Miss Mac is promises to make sure to send the police after they get to safety. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought they were going to have this big, like, it was kind of funny. I thought they were going to have this big triumphant moment. And yeah. No. yeah, no, no. Instead, instead of, yeah, we are all sisters. No, they're like, okay, well, we're going to split up now. <laughs> yeah. She's like, all right, try and try and keep safe while we're gone. Yeah. Everyone stick together in groups of two. <laughs> unless, yeah. unless you hear a noise, then go do something on your own. Highly murderable groups of two. In case you hear a noise, break up even further, putting yourself more at risk. Yeah, what's in the attic? Climb up that ladder. (laughs) 
Uh, we see Lauren is not dead. She is safely drool sleeping where where Michelle Trachtenberg left her. Good. Glad Lauren's not dead. Great. Uh, outside, Miss Mac and Mary Elizabeth Winstead get in a car. Miss Mac has to scrape the ice off the window with a metal wire brush that Mary Elizabeth Winstead does not know what it is. Yeah, because uh, apparently when you come from the South, you're so stupid you don't understand that a brush would brush snow off the windshield you can't see out of before you start driving. Yeah. I I will admit that I didn't know that that was the type of thing that you use to get ice off of a windshield. I would worry that that would just straight up ruin the windshield because I've never been. Well, you use, you use like a plastic bristle brush for the snow. If you have ice, you, you use, you know, a scraper. Okay. But like that, like that metal, metal ass brush. No, that metal ass brush was, I don't know what the fuck that, that was. So maybe that's intense. why, <laughs> maybe that's why she was, uh, confused yeah she's like uh what are you gonna do with that and we get a we get a fun little miss mac complaining about stuck up bitches while she's scraping the ice off of the windshield uh yeah i like that that was that was good classic miss mac business frigid bitch <laughs> yeah she calls her a frigid bitch freaking southern princess <laughs> And then while she's doing that, she sees an eyeball look out through the very small part that she has scraped. And then uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead dies by being splat- blood splattered to death to death on the indoor windshield. And yeah, it's, uh, like major head splody, but yeah, but they don't really explain or show why. Yeah, it, it's like a a blood like water balloon went off against the inside <laughs> of the windshield. It, it looks it, pretty cool. It did look pretty cool, but that's exactly what it looked like, a blood water balloon. Yeah, and then uh, this freaks out Miss Max, so she goes back towards the house, and uh, a giant icicle falls at that very moment and impales her through the head. It, it, which may be the single dumbest moment in the movie. I think I think it's a strong contender, because <laughs> it's, it's like it could have been something where they planned it, but they didn't. You know, like they didn't like Agnes didn't loosen that at all. No, it just happened. Yeah, it just happened. I mean, there, there's a shot that shows it earlier in the movie. So maybe they're trying to set it up for later. Yeah, which seems like something that that this director would do because he he clearly overthought every moment of this film. I mean, yeah, I get man. I will say it reminds me of Final Destination, and he yeah. did produce and maybe even write Final Destination. Yeah, that's true. So this could have been like a little homage to himself. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is very Final Destination-y. Yeah, the best thing anything can be. <laughs> uh, inside, Michelle Trachtenberg gets uh, bagged to be murdered, mm-hmm. but she gets away and uh beats agnes with the aforementioned ski pole um and we see that agnes has a already blood soaked crystal unicorn yep uh, but then instead of killing michelle trachtenberg with the already bloody crystal unicorn she flings a pair of ice skates and kills michelle trachtenberg by chunky style scalping her the back of her (laughs) head chopped open with ice skates yeah, she like laser shaved the back of her skull off. It's quite a throw. Which, and I was very disappointed as a Michelle Trachtenberg fan. I was like, oh no, I thought she was the main character. But, and she was like being all heroic and kicking ass and then just, boop, no. Yeah, she, she ended up being kind of secondary in this movie. Yeah, sad. Someone climbs into bed with Lauren and gets all gropey and masturbating on her in a very uncomfortable scene she wakes up while this is happening realizes that it's happening sees the blood drenched crystal unicorn (laughs) on her nightstand and grabs it turns stabs down into the bed behind her but nothing is there and then she gets stabbed in the eye by agnes (laughs) (laughs) i Get stabbed in the eye by Agnes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who who can say really? Who can say? <laughs> uh, Kelly and Lee run into Lauren's room to hide. Uh, they call Melissa's phone, 
and see that it is in the ceiling. <laughs> you can see the light from the phone from through the ceiling. <laughs> That's, I was lost at that point. <laughs> I guess the idea is that there's a little peak hole and that just they positioned the cell phone so that the you have a call light on old school flip phones would come through there. Yeah, that's a, that's a real leap of faith right there. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but they can see it. <laughs> I guess maybe they, they they tried filming it without a light from it. They're like, no, it doesn't really come through that it's in the ceiling. It doesn't make sense. You know what we should do is <laughs> make the ceiling light up like there's a cell phone in it. <laughs> it made no sense. <laughs> and they really, they really get mileage out of it, too. Oh, yeah. No, it, the, it, she calls, sees it, calls it again. <laughs> <laughs> to show everyone else, see, look, there's a cell phone in the ceiling. And then the cell phone lights up again to call them back. <laughs> I'm like, wow, wait, is, is, are we going to get a half an hour of this? What is yeah. it? <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a who's on first situation. It just is going to keep going. Keystone capers with the cell phone. <laughs> Kyle comes in. That's, oh, oh yeah, this whole time Lauren has been in the bed with her with her arm cr across her eyes and now the arm falls and they see that she is dead and that her eyeballs have been plucked out. Mm -hmm. Lee thinks Kyle did it. She has the uh, barbecue prongs from earlier that Miss Mac used to roast a marshmallow and she wants to stab him with it. Kelly <laughs> proves that it's not Kyle by showing them the cool cell phone trick that she just learned. <laughs> and that's what billy calls they answer the phone and she says what have you done billy which that's that was kind of fun i i enjoyed mm. the fact that she is now fully engaged with her paranoid schizophrenia where she has imagined that billy is there <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly and it turns out that uh he's in the attic and she says that she can see, hear that someone else is with him uh so you know Let's go into the attic. <gasps> yeah, I mean, what, what else would you do? Yeah, so they hatch this clever scheme. You see, the way this is going to work is Kyle is going to climb up the, the, the ladder, and at the very moment that he opens the attic door, that's when they're going to turn on the flashlight. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's all of this, like, musical buildup to it, and then they, oh, he opens the door and she turns on the flashlight. And then, of course, nothing happens because that's not a plan. <laughs> Which is fantastic. But then a second later, a, a bag descends, covers his head, and he gets dragged up. Uh, he fights. Somehow, somehow uh, Lee and Kelly both ascend the very small ladder simultaneously <laughs> yeah either that or one of them made it to the attic but waited for the other one to come all the way up and then they <laughs> charge in together meanwhile uh we see that that kyle is is fighting for his life uh he gets stabbed in the face by the crystal unicorn at this point instead of <laughs> worrying or fighting they both just kind of lay around and be freaked out um mm, yeah they find Claire's body in the rocking chair. This is especially distressful for Lee, who is her older sister. There's squishy noises, and they turn and they see that Agnes has been busily <laughs> removing Kyle's eyeballs from his head, and she is holding them by their long, long, long eyeball stalks as a <laughs> pair of dangly eyeballs. <laughs> It was, yeah, that was like, it was quite an impressive pair of eyeball stocks. <laughs> yeah. Those eyeballs just won't quit. They go on for days. Uh, which, yeah. I mean, it was, it was a cool enough scene. Like that was, yeah. that was an eyeball thing. I didn't mind as much. Um, yeah. That's when they notice that all of the dead girls' uh, bodies have been placed around the Christmas tree. All of them have had their eyes removed. Those eyes are dangling in the Christmas tree like ornaments. And Eve's head is the topper of the tree. 
<laughs> yep. And just in case you didn't notice, they have to keep showing this stuff over and over again. I guess it's to distract you from the fact that we now see that Agnes looks like later stage Iggy Pop. <laughs> yeah, with the yellowest uh, uh, contact lens. I, I, what was that about? I, I, I think it's supposed to be, you know, like the eyeball sticking out in uh, the original, you know? Like that okay. scene where you see the close up of his eye and it looks all weird. Yeah. I don't I mean, know. She, she looked like a normal person when she was a kid. She just looked like some kid. Yeah, like a, maybe a slightly ugly child, but then yeah. grew up into Iggy Pop. Had her eyes ga- eye gouged out and, and then had that eye replaced and had the other one somehow made to match this weird yellow look. Yeah, yeah, was able to get a custom uh, wooden eye that looks <laughs> just like the real one. Yeah. Um, and that's Iggy Pop. Yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. Agnes is played by a cameraman, by the way. Really? Yeah, he is. Uh, he's a cameraman. He does lots of lots of good camera work and uh, plays Agnes. OK, sure. Why not? Who, who, who could say why not? <laughs> that's uh, around this time. Lee starts falling through the floor. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Uh, and into the downstairs slowly, but tries not to for some reason. (laughs) Yeah, please keep me in here with the murderer. (laughs) Yeah, and then once she finishes falling through the floor, where she's obviously safer, Kelly's like, oh, that's good. I should go fall through the floor too. (laughs) But of course she gets gets yoinked by Agnes and they have a struggle. At this point, candles fall onto paper and start a fire. Kelly pokes Agnes in the eyeball with the marshmallow prong, and it makes a spring noise. <laughs> boing, boing, boing. Yeah, yeah, a comical little spring noise, like in uh, a house whenever he shoots the harpoon gun at the wall. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> at this point, Agnes, they, they both stop fighting and just look at each other. Agnes pulls the prong out of her eye socket and the wooden eye comes out with it. And at this point, Kelly realizes oh, it's Agnes. Um, yeah. She says, yeah. we're not your family, Agnes, and your brother's not here. To which Agnes replies, no, my daddy's here. Mm. And then the Hulk climbs out of the floor. <laughs> <laughs> because sure, why not? Yeah. And around the time that Billy the Incredible Hulk climbs out of the floor, Agnes falls into the wall. And it's really hard to tell what up-down direction business is going on, but that's happening. Uh, A bunch of stuff is dragged around by the Christmas light strings, including the tree. Kelly falls in and is stuck in the wall with Agnes below her and Billy above her. And she's hammering on the wall for Lee to try to figure out how to smash through the wall and get her out. And this takes forever. Yeah, forever. And it's so chaotic and convoluted and, and, and really hard to follow. Yeah. And not interesting, not really that much fun to watch. I mean, it was just just terrible yeah and it really could be i mean i like the idea of being stuck in walls and having someone Mm -hmm. climbing up towards you and another person climbing down towards you but it just did not nail it at all it's just too much too much hyper kinetic activity going on at all times yeah yeah and and a lot of it is it's it's switching to lee who's like trying to figure out where where do i smash through this wall she ends up using a, a hand weight to smash through one of those printout sheet by sheet posters <laughs> yeah uh, and she smashes right through the yellow eyeball ball of this sheet by sheet poster but then it turns out that that's right where billy is and so he each arm smashes through a different part of the wall to get her <laughs> <laughs> and uh that's fine then it's fine then she just runs around in the house to find somewhere else to smash through a wall um she ends up doing it smashes through the wall and gets kelly out just in time because the on fire christmas tree falls into the wall and starts burning the people that are in the wall billy and agnes and at that point uh they like pour paint thinner around and they get out and everything's fine. 
<laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And that's how it yeah. feels too. It's like, oh, okay. Oh, they got out. All right, oh, great. Oh, good. Movie over. Yeah, movie over. Why is there still a lot of room left? Oh, there's another <laughs> there's another movement of this film. <laughs> Why is there more? Uh, Lee and Kelly have now gone to the other set, which is a hospital. Yeah. Outside, a reporter is talking about the Billy and Agnes murder spree. She talks about Billy escaping from the sanitarium and Agnes having been discharged from the orphanage or whatever. We we see a hospital undertaker or whatever being a whiny shit boy for a long time. <laughs> um, he unzips one of the body bags and gets bone sawed. We see his teeth and blood fly across the room. It's Billy. And we also see that Agnes is alive. Yeah. In a right, body yeah, bag. What was the hell? What the hell was that? Mm -hmm. They yeah. just... Nobody noticed that they weren't actually dead and they somehow managed to get free rides to the morgue because mm -hmm. they knew that the girls would be there and they could continue mm -hmm. their rampage there. Yep, that's the plan. <laughs> that's the plan. And these are the experts that put them in body bags. <laughs> wow. <laughs> at least at least Billy is like singed, but <laughs> Agnes looks fine. <laughs> yeah, she just, just hops right out. Yeah, yeah. She's just taking a nap, taking a little zippy nap. <laughs> It's fine. Don't worry about it. Yep. Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't matter. In in a hospital room where Kelly is in the bed and Lee isn't, uh, Kelly says, how long were they in the house? Months? Years? <laughs> Lee says, we'll never know. While just outside, a reporter is talking about how Billy had just escaped earlier that day <laughs> and about how Agnes had just been destroyed. <laughs> It's like, dude, Glenn, you made this fucking movie. Why did you, how did you not notice this, you imbecile? <laughs> and I mean, it's possible for those two characters to not know it, but it also doesn't matter as a C. <laughs> no, at all. <laughs> like it's some sort of horror lore moment, you know, like uh... we'll never know. Cut to reporter. If only they were still alive so we could ask them. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, Lee is sad that she can't open her gift uh, in front of her sister, so Kelly will just have to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's so ridiculous. And it turns out that that gift is a wristwatch. Great. Uh, and it is engraved, <laughs> not with names, but just with the phrase family forever. Oh, good. So this is also a Fast and Furious takeoff. Yeah. They have to take Kelly away for x-rays because the nurse is like, yeah, if we don't do it now, some asshole will never do it. Yeah. So as Kelly is now gone, all of a sudden, Lee hears someone in the ceiling, goes into a different room, I think, or something. Yeah, sure. Sees a blonde in the bed and says, hey, I thought they took you for x-rays. And then gets killed by Agnes, but right before Agnes breaks her neck out of nowhere, uh, mm -hmm. she says, forever. <laughs> and then breaks her neck and she's dead. And then instantly, Kelly returns to her room and asks the nurse, where's Lee? And the nurse doesn't know, but she does see that it's hard to open the door and they really should have fixed this by now. And that's another little homage to the the original movie mm -hmm. but also plays an important role in the action to come oh man very clever so good oh, movies <laughs> <sighs> kelly finds a bloody chunk of lee's watch under her pillow it's the part that says family forever i'm glad that came back so quickly <laughs> <laughs> and seeing this bloody chunk of Lee's watch thinks, hmm, and that's about it. <laughs> um, she, yeah, no, no need for alarm, just, just a bloody chunk watch. Yeah, chunk. she gets out of bed, just walks around a little, sees that the door won't open, looks at the defibrillator, and then sees blood pooling in the ceiling light fixture. At this point, she freaks out. She hits the emergency call button, 
but it turns out that everyone is too busy listening to carolers to be professional medical practitioners. <laughs> the, the world's loudest carolers. Apparently. Yeah. Yeah, there's even a guy standing right next to it, just not looking slightly down and slightly to his left. <laughs> At the quickly blinking red light, she sees a ceiling panel pull back and charges up the defibrillator. She's attacked by Agnes and then sticks the the shock paddles onto Agnes's head and shocks her all the way to death. Fries her brain. Yep. Roasty toasty. Yeah. Also, that's not how defibrillators work because she like holds the trigger down so it just keeps going. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you know what are you gonna do we see we see agnes's face is now like pan seared and she's a little smoky then billy comes out of the ceiling she uh breaks the very small glass so that she can get out of her room whenever he comes out she clobbers him with a thin aluminum crutch and mm-hmm. then throws it down next to him it turns around does an about face and slowly walks away, which of course then he uses the crutch to trip her. She knocks over uh, what looks like a orderly table, but then turns out to be a tray of surgical tools. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which I don't know. He was just cleaning up the surgical rooms from the tools from the room next door. Yeah. Um, so then Billy grabs a scalpel from the knocked over surgical tools stabs her with it in the back while she's trying to get away they struggle and she manages to throw him over a balcony and he gets impaled through the guts of an entire christmas tree yeah through the guts which we see wrap around the ornament from the top of the tree like a snake yeah yep and he uh he he goes about you know good way through the christmas tree and then is just Dangle dead all the way home. Movie over. Yeah. Man. What the fuck? Yeah, it 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 just gets worse and worse. I mean, it just devolves into complete just meaninglessness. Yeah. It's so weird. And it's very strange that Kelly is the main character because they do so little to try to even make you connect with her like at least the other girls get like little jokes or or, uh, opinions her big thing is that she thinks that people shouldn't want to tape sex (laughs) yeah pretty much she she really her character had no personality whatsoever yeah it's very very strange (laughs) it is it's a weird movie glenn morgan i have questions but that's okay Thank you for trying. <laughs> yes. Thank you for, you know, having the, the nerve to attempt that, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it had promise, but it, it just went off the rails and yeah. never, never got back. It just got worse and worse, really. Yeah. I, the, the, one of the best things I can say about this movie is that if I have been, had been chosen to direct a remake of Black Christmas, I also mm-hmm. probably would not have made a good movie. Uh, yeah, I can pretty much guarantee my Black Christmas would be horrific. Yeah, I cannot imagine working with actors like that. <laughs> yeah. All right, now try this way. Ah, oh, fuck it. Just unbutton one of your blouse buttons. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me, Josh. Uh, none of that made any sense. It's all right. We're going with it. It's in the writing. It's in the script right here. See? Yeah, it makes sense here. See, later there it says family matters or whatever. <laughs> What's another uh, Christmas movie or Christmas song? Put that in yeah. there. Presley. So, yeah. So that's the movie. That's the movie. It's uh, it's a bit of a stinker. It really, it, it really sucked. <laughs> and it, it really could have been okay, but it just wasn't. <laughs> and that knowing that made it even worse. Yeah. It's like knowing that it, it was just within reach of being, you know, a halfway decent little horror film, you know, kind of a kind of a fun tribute to, you know, to to a classic. But no, nope, it just didn't work that way. Just and didn't. It, yeah, if you if you haven't heard our first episode on or, you know, our episode on the first Black Christmas movie, I mean, we loved it. it it's great. The original. It's it's the it's the first movie we both gave a five out of five. It's our first 10 out of 10 movie. Yeah. 
it's it's pristine it's great and there's no way there's no way to remake black christmas and make it as good as the original so there's no real reason to try and he obviously didn't try to do that you know he was at least like no no no, i'm gonna i'm gonna go in a different direction i'm gonna try something different and that's great i respect that it just didn't turn out okay yeah he had he had a good sense of visual style um he he kind of did a decent job of of giving it more of a you know updated time like feeling of time but but at the same time still kind of being reminiscent of the original uh he changed it and made it more kind of you know more comical and stuff which you know maybe to try to appeal to a younger audience and that's fine and all those things would have been okay but then as the movie goes on as we mentioned i mean it just gets it just gets so bogged down in in too much too many cuts and too many details that really aren't that important you know enough of that stuff and you just get lost after a while yeah I thought the I thought the choice to oh no the go to method of death is bag and stab like like in the mm-hmm. original it was you know okay I see there's a there's a bagging but it's not like all throughout in the original it was he kills them with whatever happens to be around and that was part of what made right. it scary yeah it just seemed opportunistic that was the impression I got they must have like had a, a you know supply of the exact same like slightly green tinted precise size head bags yeah had this guy been saving all his shopping bags i mean it didn't make any make any sense he's been locked in a cell his whole life why does he have all these grocery bags i I figure it's like you know uh the leash that comes with the poop bag dispenser it's like something like that (laughs) like oh here's another one here we go (laughs) see could be maybe that was someone's someone's secret santa gift in that (laughs) that bag that he took yeah that's that's his uh white elephant that he got <laughs> someone got shit bags for their white elephant gift <laughs> i'm gonna put these to use <laughs> jokes on you these are useful <laughs> bags these are perfect head size <laughs> it also gets real confusing about like who did did billy kill anyone in this movie uh well he killed his uh his mom yeah and his stepdad yeah, that's tr- that's true. But like, but did he kill any of the girls, or was it all Agnes? I think it was all Agnes. Yeah, it's very I, strange. Yeah. I don't think he. I don't think he did kill any of the girls. It's also, I, I guess, the idea is because inbreeding is funny, and that's why it's funny to make Agnes a giant ugly dude. I guess I, I really didn't get that. And what? Why even have Agnes in the first place? What was wrong with Billy as a bad guy? Yeah. I mean, I get the idea of wanting to explore because, you know, Agnes is mentioned. So they're like, well, let's make her an entire character. Hey, you know, what would mm-hmm. be cool is maybe if she's like a co-murderer. But but it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't cool. It wasn't cool. It's like, oh, and also Agnes. <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah. Agnes, a giant butch, clearly dude yeah. dressed up to to look like a woman a woman who is the adult version of a, of a little girl that we see earlier in the movie who looks nothing like this person at all. Yeah. I mean, you know, usually they try to pick actors that look kind of similar. Yeah. No, the, the Not, little girl is like, like chubby faced. Uh, yeah. Has her face is a different shape. She, she has brown curly hair. Yeah. And then turns into, um, I- Iggy pop. Yeah. Yeah. Basically Iggy pop. Long, straight, blonde, like like hay-like hair, and yeah, strange yellow eyes that made no sense, and like this big, thick, broad man, man's nose, huge Adam's apple. Yeah, I mean, clearly a dude. And there wasn't the the, the character that they pick for the child is is a a girl. It's yeah. just it's a ve- a feminine looking girl. Yeah, it's it's a very strange choice. I don't understand it. I also don't think i appreciate it i mean it, it looks like a fred armison character in portlandia like it's just it's <laughs> it does not actually. trying very hard at all it's just yeah it's just a whatever it's like a a joke i think it's a joke i think it is actually like intended like a, as a funny thing you think so i think it's so like i i i, I don't know i don't know <laughs> <laughs> it's it's funny because it's absurd <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was, 
yeah, I don't know. It was it was strange. I mean, a lot of a lot of horror movies are, you know, a lot of bad horror movies are just they're just unimaginative and kind of, you know, they get repetitive and and they're just not very interesting. They're kind of boring. And this movie, I mean, I, I don't wouldn't say it was boring, but it was just it was it was tedious. Yeah. It, it it was full blown boring at parts just because they didn't really give you a lot to to latch on to. Well, it's, that's true. It's, I mean, for I mean for me, th- there were times at which it was engaging, but uh, at the beginning of the movie, it seems like it it's trying to build your relationship as a viewer with the girls, but then it just falls short of actually doing that. And so you're yeah. left with the first half of caring about what happens to these characters. And then the ways that they die are just dumb. <laughs> yeah. Cause the, the, that's the thing. The first movie is not about Billy. It's about the people in the house, the mm-hmm. girls, this movie is about Billy. So why focus so much on the girls when they really don't matter? Yeah. Like Glenn, you didn't learn anything from the original. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 very strange. It is it is yeah. The the original was you know ob, like very blatantly feminist. It was kind of uh, an inspired by, but also a rejection of Giallo. And then this is just what if hot girls? And it was a movie about Billy, but also mostly Agnes. <laughs> Let's hire a bunch of known actors and and then just squander them. Yeah, it's so weird. I don't know. I gave this movie one and a half out of five stars. It's right. It's like dangling on the edge of watchability. Like you, you Mm -hmm. can watch this movie, but really the only purpose behind watching it is if you're like a completionist and you want to watch it because it is a remake of the original, the, the watchability mostly isn't there from the movie's own merits. True. It's, it's just a movie to check off your list. That's all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, if you're just, you know, if you really love the, the original and, and so you feel kind of like you want to just be a completist just for the sake, which I think a lot of horror movie fans will do that. It's worth watching in that respect, but it's I don't think you should set your expectations too high. I, um, I was I was it's funny because I really was surprised at the beginning. I was thinking to myself, man, I you know, I, I tried not to read too far into reviews or anything, but, uh, you know, but I knew that the consensus, like I saw the, you know, like the Rotten Tomatoes consensus or whatever, it obviously was not rated high by fans or critics. And I wasn't expecting that it would be necessarily, but I thought, okay, well, it's obviously it's not going to be considered some classic because nobody talks about it that way. But I guess I went into it thinking, okay, the thing's going to be terrible from start to finish. And it's not, it, it just slowly, you know, introduces problems and those problems just grow until they basically take over the whole movie. Yep. And all the good stuff just kind of gets choked out. So yeah, like for, so having, having said that, I'm going to give it, uh, <laughs> that, I was, it sucks because you, you called it. I'm like, I'm giving it a one and a half. Two. <laughs> <laughs> we always pick the same. Uh, you know, when we first started doing this, I was like, man, there are going to be times where our ratings are going to be radically different and we'll be able to like argue about it. <laughs> that not it just doesn't happen. Does it? No. <laughs> Cause and it's so funny. Cause I was like, I'm going to give it, you know what? I'm going to give it a two when you said one and a half. And I'm like, Man, this movie just doesn't deserve it. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't like for, for me, once it hits two, it is absolutely purely like watchable. Like, yeah, it's not good, yeah. but watch this movie. Do watch this movie. It's a horror movie. It's a two. It's fine. You'll like it, but yeah, it's just not quite there. <laughs> It's not. It's it's very much. <laughs> you could very much just say, "Don't watch this." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, maybe maybe I'm being unfair. Maybe it's because like part of it is the disappointment. You know, like like Intersect was very disappointing because the premise was so good, and this mm-hmm. movie is also very disappointing because you're like, "Oh yeah, Black Christmas. Let's see what they do." Oh, Black Christmas, where they're gonna explore the character Billy. That sounds okay. Mm-hmm. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not introducing and you know having Agnes be this huge. I mean, Agnes could have just died in childbirth or some shit or yeah. whatever, and and the mom resents him because 
she blames him for Agnes's death, and then we don't have to have this this character that's just useless. Yeah, or Agnes could even be something that's like like present and just mostly alluded to and then at the end of this movie billy is dead but we see that like agnes is also there and we don't know how much and she's been involved in all of this that right. could have been good too there'd be lots of ways of using agnes in really effective and interesting ways and instead they went with the primary murderer and looks like iggy pop <laughs> i think it's one of, i think it's one of those movies where uh, you, you know, like, I don't think the director was, you know, really knew what the hell he was doing to begin with, but yeah. I have a feeling that a lot of what happened in this movie was just something he was told to do as a cash grab, kind of like, we're gonna, this is gonna be great, we're gonna put all this gore, and, you know, word will get out that it's super gory, and all the kids will want to watch it, but except they didn't. Yeah. Super strange. Uh, it's a great movie to watch if what you want to watch is weird eyeball stuff, like, someone eating an eyeball and it turns out that the consistency of an eyeball is it's like a little balloon and once it hits a certain amount of pressure it pops <laughs> yeah so that's good i guess sure yeah <laughs> if you're into uh goopy gore then again you know it, it has it has a decent amount of that yeah but it's not really used in a way that's particularly engaging so yeah i i prefer like fake old school wrong color red blood to the gore in this movie yeah i don't i the, i don't see where the gore was even really necessary in this movie i mean it's yeah. you know some movies just glorify in it like these japanese films where it's like you know <laughs> people are jesus god the, the cat stepping on the keyboard ah, podcast nice um you know and it's like uh blood spraying like in a fine mist it's just completely cartoonish and it's hilarious yeah um, but no, this one, it was, it was, you know, semi realistic gore, just really, really excessive. And like they were trying to gross you out, but anybody who's ever seen any horror movie has seen all this stuff a million times and nobody's impressed by it. Yeah. And, and see, that's the thing is, you know, uh, the, the original is, you know, like the the archetype of the slasher film. And there's yeah. been a lot of slasher movies since then. And and then this is like, oh, yeah, a remake of the original. And then it just fails to do even the things that the genre has developed and like done well. It just is tired, like all of the, the things are tired and and deficient of skill. Like it's like there's there's so many examples since the original of doing things well, and it doesn't do any of those things. Mm hmm. It could have been good in so like there are so many different ways that it could have been a better movie, and it just like found this narrow path to somewhere below mediocre. Yeah, it even had like a kind of a halfway decent Christmas feel to it. It just, it, yeah. you know, like the the songs were there in the old school lights, and you know that just that kind of seventies look that they obviously borrowed from the original, which was a smart idea. Yeah, and and took a lot of elements from the original that that you know in the in the original premise of the movie worked out just fine i was even okay with billy you know and but then the agnes thing was no good for me and nope. and as as we've already repeatedly said how it just it just gets so like murky and weird yeah yeah and yeah confusing uh, yeah i got lost a lot there was a lot of stuff that I was like, ah, man, I need to go back. But you know what? I'm not going to. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I will say uh, doing the notes for this was hard. I, I watched the movie, um, you know, just to like to, to watch it and take it in. And then I watched it again to take notes. And mm -hmm. I did not want to do that second watch. I was like, yeah. oh, why didn't I take notes the first time? This is terrible. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, God. So so that's a three out of ten from the both of us. Um, it's it's not good. Uh, just watch the original again and you'll have a better time. Yeah, if you're a completist and you just, you know, you, it's, you just feel like you need to see it, well, then see it. Yeah. And uh, 
I think you'll you'll probably, I'm guessing, probably agree with us for the most part. Yeah. And if that's you, then you will also want to tune in two weeks from today, unless you're <laughs> not listening to this on the day that it drops, in which case it might already be out, go back in time or whatever, I don't care, when we review Sophia Takal's 2019 movie, Black Christmas, that isn't really a remake as much as it is just another movie called that <laughs> oh it's gonna be great have you already seen it john nope oh, God. okay you've seen it huh yeah yeah yes is, is it is it catastrophically terrible i you know <laughs> i think <laughs> I think it might be better than this movie that we just watched. Wow. <laughs> but uh, but as far as being a remake of Black Christmas, it is mm-hmm. uh, it is not. It is. OK, it is. Uh, it takes some themes. You know, there's the girls at the sorority house and um, it takes the ideas of the original where it's, um, you know, like all of these different male characters represent different uh, aspects of the patriarchy imposing themselves upon women. It mm-hmm. takes that and is like, aha, what if instead of Billy, it's this? And that's uh, what that movie is. Okay. So there isn't even a Billy in 2019 Black Christmas by Sophia Takal. Well, that's interesting. I mean, it's it sounds like a, a at least a different take. So I'll... I'll I'll give it a shot. I'm ready to go. Yeah, let's do it. There is still a crystal unicorn, so worry you not. Oh, good. <laughs> yes. They're like, we got to keep something from there. <laughs> <laughs> it just wouldn't be Black Christmas without a Christmas unicorn or crystal unicorn. I talk good. Yeah. Um, please, please, listener, please. Leave us a rating and review on the podcatcher that you are using to listen to this or on some mm-hmm. other podcatcher to help mm-hmm. other people find us. We don't have much of those going on, and uh, it would be good and helpful if you would like to reach out to us and tell us how dumb we are or bad at talking <laughs> or other things. You can reach us on Twitter and Instagram at Pod. Or on Facebook at Loathsome Things. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Quite. Yeah, not a great movie, but always fun to talk about. Yep. John, what is your favorite horror Christmas movie that is not Black Christmas? That is not Black Christmas. My favorite horror Christmas. Jesus. If it helps, my answer is I have no idea. Why did you spring this question on me all of a sudden? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm trying to think. I mean, there's there's been some that have kind of popped up here and there recently. There's been some, a couple different ones that have just kind of showed up like on different streaming services or whatever. But they're obviously not memorable enough for me to even remember any of their names. I just remember seeing some of them. There, yeah, I don't know. I don't think there is any. <laughs> There's not. They're all bad. Silent Night, Deadly Night. I don't think I saw that. Yeah, that was that was uh, apparently that came out two years before Black Christmas. So I, I do want to watch that at some point and see. Oh, did it really? I didn't realize it was that old. Yeah. Or maybe there's a different one because this one was originally going to be like Silent Night, Bloody Night or something like that. Or not this oh, okay. one, uh, but uh, uh, Bob Clark's original. Well, yeah. Had an yeah. alternate title and huh. not just Stranger in the House. Right. Yeah. But, wow. uh, but okay. yeah, I don't know. There's lots of Krampus movies. I think we need to do, I think we need to, like, every Christmas do something oh, like yeah. this, though. Like, do, I, uh, I, remakes. Yeah, I agree. Um, what's the one, it's, it's it's like a Finnish movie where Santa is like a demon or something, and and uh, he, he comes with, like, it, it's this crazy movie that's, like, completely over the top. I forget what it's called, but it's great. Oh, I don't know. That sounds good. That, that's my favorite Christmas movie that I can think of right now. <laughs> I did see an episode of of like a little little like horror anthology show, and I don't remember what it's called, but yeah, Santa is a demon that eats cookies and vomits r- completely wrapped gifts that are exactly what the child wants, <laughs> but it smells them for naughty or nice, and if they are naughty, it eats them. 
Nice. And it's fantastic. It's like five minutes long and these two little kids go down and they check on it and uh, and it like vomits out their presence onto them. So they're like covered in gross slime. And then the, mm-hmm. the one little kid, like once it leaves, it opens it up and he's like, it's exactly what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Which is oh, OK. Of course, there's there's like a million of them. There's there's uh, OK. So that movie is called Rare Exports. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah the reindeer exporting thing. Now it's, it's crazy when you look and see all the movies. I mean, there's gremlins, Mm -hmm. um, which is great. Uh, the day of the uh, beast. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, and then there's all these ones that are kind of like set at Christmas, even though they're not really Christmas movies. They're like diehard Christmas movie, like inside, Mm -hmm. which really isn't an, is not a Christmas movie, but is, it's super intense. Um, so, yeah, like you mentioned, all the all the stupid Krampus movies. Yeah, uh, a Christmas horror story yep. with uh, Santa versus Krampus. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, The Lodge is apparently a Christmas movie. Oh, I, I guess yeah, I guess you could say that. Yeah, sort and, of. And I was wrong. It's Silent Night, Bloody Night. That is from 1972. Oh, okay, Silent Night, Bloody Night. Yeah. Oh, there's. <laughs> hey, let's not forget. There's Jack Frost. Oh yeah, <laughs> I don't want to do that movie. <laughs> no, no. And there's a wait further instructions is also set at Christmas. So there's all kinds of good stuff. Here's one. Uh, Christmas Evil oh, from okay. 1980. This slasher <laughs> flick was very controversial when it was released in 1980. Yet over the years, this campy horror film about a Christmas obsessed young man who snaps has become a cult favorite. Oh. <laughs> Looks terrible. Christmas evil. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I know. All right. Well, <sighs> listeners, we wish you a merry join us again in two weeks or in one week, actually. Yeah, we're releasing these one week apart um, in one week whenever we review the next one. Sophia to calls Black Christmas. I'm so excited. It's so weird. John, I actually am. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's weird. It's it's worth uh, having seen, I think. I think we'll be okay with having seen it. Excrement. All right, listeners. Thank you, and join us again. And in the meantime, go watch horror movies. Merry Christmas. <laughs>